Hi, good morning, and uh, welcome to our Open Professions Roundtable. Uh, we have our uh, Open Professions Certified Panel here, our panel of experts uh, arrayed around the table for a little bit of a discussion here. Uh, we've got some questions that uh, we'd like to ask you, and uh, uh, I think this is you know really great representation of folks who've uh, been working uh, in the industry for a while, have many different certifications and have gone down the path of becoming professionally certified and have some great experience with the Open Group uh, program. And uh, so let's get started here and ask a few questions. Um, I'll ask a question, a couple of folks will answer and uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to get around the table as fast as we possibly can. So uh, first question is, um, how, uh, how has the Open Profession certification evolved since you first obtained uh, your certification from the early days? Uh, I mean, has it always stayed the same? I think, Paul, you'd be a great person to answer that one. Uh, yeah, well, so um, my first certification came about 15 years ago, so a reasonable uh, amount of time for it to evolve over. Um, I'm certified in the architect profession, so I'm going to focus mostly on that one. But clearly, we've added other professions like data science in that time as well. So, you know, those are some of the changes. But but if I think about predominantly the architect one, it's become, I think, broader and, and more inclusive. And what I mean by that is, originally the certification questions when i went through um, had been formed from the experiences of architects working on uh, solutions on large projects for example so that was the kind of the main core of where the, the body and the work had come from and it needed a little bit of interpretation for some of the emerging areas including areas like enterprise architecture um, and certainly as enterprise architecture and competencies like business architecture have become more mainstream information architecture security architecture type specialisms have become part of that the certification has grown to accommodate those more obviously i think it's they've always been part of it they've not been excluded but it's been more deliberately uh, uh, aligned to sort of understand how those uh, specialisms fit within the whole family of, of, of the profession and, and the field of architecture and what is core um, and just behind that i would say though it, it, the nice part is it hasn't flipped and flopped with fashion it definitely persists with what i would see as a kind of enduring capability with, but with present practice excellent so Another question here is, uh, what does your company get out of supporting open profession standards and certification programs? Um, Scott, uh, you just um, became Kindrel. How, how is it helping you guys evolve? You know, I think there are two things that supporting open professions really does for us. One is that it helps us bring together our professionals with a shared body of knowledge. In doing so, that really helps us to both communicate internally, as well as communicate not only among the architect profession, but to communicate with the many varied professions that we have. That set of common realized knowledge and standards really helps us to get the work done that we need much more efficiently. But more than that, being able to participate in a set of common standards not only helps us inside our organization, but externally with our clients as well especially for those that also support the open profession standards, it gives us a common language to be able to use. We think about architecture in the same way. We talk about architecture in the same way. And along with that as well, we organize similarly. So when we get together to do work, we're really working in concert as one common extended team. Great. That's awesome, Scott. So Ling, um, how does your company, uh, you know, how do you help your company get value out of uh, your certification? Well, um, at a personal level, I find that the um, the certification program helps drive mentoring within my organization. So for instance, you know, uh, as I mentor others in their career progression, I am able to use the certification program as a roadmap to help my mentees build those skills and experiences that are able to be useful for them as they tackle um, projects and deliverables. So as this pervades through the organization, it helps to accelerate the capability of the organization and promote a culture of mentoring. Oh, so that's, that's, that's how. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. Awesome. Uh, Phil, um, how do you, uh, you kind of come from a different perspective in your career. So how, how has it helped you and, uh, and the company, you know, go after more business? Uh, so first of all, thank you for uh, asking me to join today. Um, I look to the open group and uh, the professions as an external reference point. It helps uh, myself and the organizations that I, uh, I work for to orientate inside the universe that is the IT industry. It establishes a benchmark for professionalism and it's a North Star. It, it's the point at which we aspire to engage in a professional manner to undertake very complex pieces of work to the best of our ability. I, I guess that's it. It's, it's, the, it's the base standard, it's the gold standard. Everything from there on up is essentially what we do as professionals. Well, that's a great way of putting it. I love the idea that you uh, think of the program as the gold standard. I think that uh, we're going to put you on all the commercials from now on. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, so, um, 
let's see here. So how do, how does being certified as a professional, uh, you know, uh, how do you how do you give somebody, um, you know, who's just starting out in your career now that you are certified, uh, advice to achieve a professional certification, Maureen? One of the things that one of the things I would advise is think about the certification really as a career model, something that can help you on your journey. It, it embraces the concept of this is not just a job, right? This is a profession and professions have to be trusted. And to do that, you have to meet certain standards. And so I would say, look at what those standards are early. And as you are going through a project, you know, you'll know what you should document. And in fact, the questions are going to help you even do the projects better. We have many data scientists uh, at IBM who really have found a lot of value in just how they have to fill out some of the information for certification. Um, and it's it's really, I think, the beauty of it is this is a globally recognized standard. And unlike so many certifications that are in the market right now, the open group one is professional and it's vendor neutral and methodology based. And so it applies no matter where you go in your career. Oh, that's a great way of thinking about it. Um, Phil, how do, same question. How do you help mentor and bring up new folks, grow talent? Uh, so there's a lovely saying, which is that good people look after good people. And, and the emphasis, you can read uh, good many, many ways there. So. Um, Good relates to, a, again, a professional standard. It's an entry point. It's So from a career uh, perspective, from a framework perspective, it's essentially it's a destination for the young guys. Uh, and it's incumbent upon fellow professionals to guide other professionals, to lead the other one, as it were, through the minefield of, of uh, their early career, to ultimately get them, get them to a point where they're on a level. Uh, very early on in your career, as everybody on this call will know, uh, you are bombarded with techniques that when you were a student, you would never ever thought you would need. Um, so it's like coming across new weapons. You need to know how to wield them safely. And, and it's all part, it's all part of the journey. It's a roadmap. It's a destination. It's a framework. Uh, it's a suit of armor. It's all of those things wrapped into one. Why would you not want to take part and aspire to be part of a program like this one? Excellent. Uh, so let's uh, let's move on to another question. Thanks, Phil. Um, so how does the Open Professional Certification support equality and diversity uh, in the workplace and the industry? Because uh, you know that that is you know a big focus, and obviously uh, there have been kind of some built-in uh, systematic issues uh, with equality in the past. But you know, it, you know, how do we address that in the Open Professions program, Stephanie? Um, as a woman in enterprise architecture in the beginning, I, I felt kind of alone. Um, over the years, it seems like we have added more diversity to the program. Um, I remember my first class, I was the, the only woman out of 30. But um, I, I ask every now and then, you know, how many women are in the class now, uh, classes now, and it, it's quite a, bit, quite a few more. And as I'm mentoring others, um, there's a lot of women getting into the field as well, um, as well as, you know, other diverse, diverse areas. Uh, Ling, what's your take on that? Well, I feel that the fact that the certification program is developed by an independent body such as the Open Group uh, lends the, um, itself to be vendor neutral. So it's not biased towards IBM or Raytheon or CGR, you know, it is administered independently. And that promotes equality and, um, you know, the, the fact that everybody is working against a set of well-defined requirements that is quantifiable. And in terms of uh, diversity, the fact that everybody is working towards a common framework takes relationship out of the equation so that, you know, the manager is able to promote or recognize employees just based out of a common standard. Excellent. So. That's a really great way of looking at it. Maureen, what's your take? Uh, my take is that we've had several women in IBM who have communicated to me, one of the things they love about the certification um, process is they found it actually very empowering because it wasn't reliant on their manager um, or their even business unit. Um, they were able to meet these standards. They know that they're global. They're even recognized by the British, British Computing Society. Um, and it made them feel much more confident in their skills and their ability to apply those skills and drive business outcomes. So the other comment I wanna make is that when we were putting the program together, diversity has to be baked in right at the beginning, right? So we've had diverse companies, we've had diverse people uh, working on these standards. And, and within some of the larger companies, such as IBM, we have a governance board where we make sure for the professions there's diversity representation there. So um, it's certainly not a one size fits all, but by having these kind of open, open profession standards, I think it really supports uh, the diversity that we're after.
right? Really provides the guardrails for ensuring uh, equality amongst individuals that, you know, one person, whether they're female, well, you know, r regardless of geographic, uh, you know, residency, uh, race or whatever is measured in the same way. So really great points, guys. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, I see a lot of public sector requirements for past perform and so on and so forth. So, you know, uh, how can open profession certification support companies that bid for um, opportunities in the public sector? Paul, you're a public sector guy. I, I'm pretty sure you are. Uh, well, I've certainly uh, both worked in the public sector in the past, but also, um, you know, work into various different organizations now and companies that provide into the public sector. So what, what I would say is, you know, the public sector and the procurement in the public sector clearly, you know, it kind of uh, leads the way in that kind of openness and equal opportunity for all to be able to put into. I think that's that's the kind of the um, the, 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 the most stringent sort of need for that uh, equality. Um, but actually, it's true for all industries. A lot of industries like to be able to ensure that a full ecosystem of suppliers have an opportunity to be able to. Uh, bid into these sorts of things. So I think what counts for public sector counts for others as well. Um, but basically, it's just evidence, right? I mean, it's it's it, what it does in the same way that we talked about diversity. It's 100 percent merit based and it's evidenced and it's evidenced that it's current. And I think that's an important part of the profession. This isn't a I've got the badge. I did it 15 years ago. I've had to research by every three years to prove that I'm still practicing. I'm still doing what, what that badge says that I'm doing. And so public sector clients, but 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 any industry actually um, is has that assurance that um, the people can evidence what they've done, that they've got that past performance and that they're still currently practicing it. Uh, and it's fully unbiased and uh, removes all personal subjectivity from that assessment. Uh, Ling, uh, you know, you're focused 100 percent on uh, public sector. How is your company um, or how are you helping your company drive value as you go to market for the public sector? Sure. So for federal contracts, you know, there is uh, typically an inclusion of um, past performance and the key personnel in the request for proposals or RFP. And just like what Paul has mentioned, you know, uh, providing uh, the certification as a qualification in the resumes you submit uh, certainly helps to increase the visibility of the submissions. So I frequently use my credential to support my case of uh, seniority in responding to RFPs. And on the flip side, for the government customer, uh, the certification is one way where you can find the best vendor to carry out the work at hand. Excellent, yeah, so it really helps you uh, actually compete for business in the public sector because there's a requirement for professionalism and expertise. That's that, guys, that's a really great point. Um, so Maureen, uh, you actually are the chair of the Open Professions Board work group, so you have some visibility into how things have kind of changed uh, over the years. Um, even though you weren't there at the very beginning, you helped uh, actually, you, you sponsored Open CDS, uh, Open Certified Data Scientist. So it's going on 20 years now. I cannot believe we've been around <laughs> for 20 years, right? Time's just flown and, um, you know, but things have evolved and how, how they've uh, evolved is really important because we've, you know, kind of matched with what's going on in the industry. So how do you think... Uh, things have changed and where are we going in the future? Great question, Andres. I think what we've seen is an explosion of certifications in the market, right? People are understanding that certifications drive value, um, implement standards and help people work more productively together and in fact, help build a community. Um, and there's a lot right now of focus on, you know, product related certifications um, and they're great for building skills, but I see going forward in the next 15 years, a greater emphasis on professional level certifications, because that's really what encompasses the fact that you not just have those skills, but that you're applying it in a agreed to standard methodology that's repeatable, that it can evolve over time. For areas like, you know, AI and data science, things keep changing. Um, so quickly and the standards will be kept up to date with them so you know ethics and trustworthy is very big so i see more of those kind of uh, certifications and requirements being built in so it's a very much a you know alive and well uh, going into the future in terms of helping the different professions really become even more trusted by their client base scott you know since you're working to bring this to a whole new company environment you know what's your take on you know where you guys are going with it and where and how you're helping it evolve well, I'll tell you, looking back on this, I've had the opportunity to be involved in the professions nearly from the start. And one of the really great things to build on what Marina talked about is we've got this common thread that we've used throughout time, which is based upon the value of the professions and of the standards in that to be able to provide a baseline. But along with that as well, we've shifted over time. So as business architecture emerged, that surfaced to the top. As data science emerged, that has surfaced to the top. And as we look forward on this in my organization, one of the things that we think is going to be very important, as Marina brought up, aligned with those products 
certifications is to be able to make sure that the professions evolve over time in order to support not only what's going on in the industry, but to support the entire ecosystem. We're a portion of that overall ecosystem and play that very important part, which is we're providing the baseline, as Philip said, the North Star for what you should hope to achieve. And I think over time we'll evolve to be able to continue that role. Excellent. So speaking of Phil, uh, Phil, uh, you know how how you've been around for a long time. You're a senior guy, right? So you you you've got to you know have tons of experience helping mentor folks. So how do you how do you engage with somebody just starting off? And um, uh, is it just me or is it Andros dropped out? Is it uh, Andros yeah. dropped out? <laughs> Not just you. Yes, uh, he was going to ask you how did you prepare to complete your certification experience? Well, let's start over. Oh, lovely so, okay, answer, wait, waiting for him. So oh, comes back. Come on, you have dropped out. Turned into a Dalek. Yeah, hold on one second here. Uh, let's see if we get um, Ling. Uh, hopefully, nobody else is using house video here, but um, I guess we'll have to wait for Comcast to come back for a second. It's a good thing. That we... good. Yeah, you're good from where I am now, Andras. You can get it. Everything seems fine. Yeah, I can see you. See you too. Okay, so Ling, you want to come back on video? Oh, I see what's happening here. You know, get rid of John. You want to somebody else speak? Testing one two. Three, four, five, six. There we go. I don't well, know. All right. <laughs> I don't understand why that's something. All right. So let's start that over again. Um, so, uh, Phil, speaking of expertise, uh, you must uh, have had all sorts of opportunities to help mentor people in their career. How do you actually help them prepare to complete their certification experience profiles and, and badges? So when I saw this question was on the table, I, I, was, I was smiling, clapping my hands. Um, I'm going to steal from Paul's words. He, he talked a lot about evidencing and he talked about currentness or currency. So certainly in the larger organizations like IBM, the need to evidence current capability is at the forefront all of the time. Uh, we're repeatedly asked to be able to describe what we can do and justify our existence for good reasons, for reasons of um, professionalism and uh, market readiness and a whole lot of other things. However, I'm going to bring this down to the level of human experience. I'm minded to remember a, a very eminent IT architect in IBM. God bless him now, he's, he's retired. But he used to say the best part of the day was early on when he was walking his dog. And he said, I do my best thinking then. And, and what he was actually saying was certainly what I do every morning. Um, I spend a lot of time talking to my dog when I walk it. Uh, and the reason for that is I'm, I'm trying to actually work out what's going to happen during the day. And it, it's a it's a process, it's a framework for, for actually figuring out who you are, where you are in your life and what it means to you and the people around you. Um, so that's what I encourage my mentees to do. Again, there's a lovely expression, which is if you can't explain something to yourself, don't even bother trying to explain it to anybody else. Yeah. So it's almost cathartic first, which is a lovely experience. Being a, being an IT architect is not something that you um, you would wish to pass down the generations if you were truthful about it. Um, but actually, uh, those who aspire, those who do grasp the nettle, as it were, um, they deserve they deserve the best of care, uh, and that's what we should give them as a profession, as uh, mentors. And what you actually need within that is. Um, somewhat to, to some degree a lack of free expression there needs to be structure there needs to be rigor there needs to be um an element of difficulty involved so that you actually know that you have accomplished something when you get to the point when you can explain to the world who you genuinely are and what you genuinely do so um what i always say to people is it's not going to be hard and don't expect you're going to win but actually it's about winning it's about running the race and uh, i hope i've said a whole lot of good things in one place there say so stephanie uh you you've been in uh, uh you know um raytheon for uh, quite some time, and you know, since you adopted the OpenCA and um, ACP programs, uh, and you probably mentored quite a few folks after you learned, you know, kind of the secret handshake. You know, you got any advice here around uh, mentoring folks? Um, just that uh, one of the things actually that the program did for me was get me out um, externally and internally contributing to the architecture discipline. And so one of the things that I help a lot of um, people with is uh, making those connections to externally um, contribute to the discipline and, and internally as well, because we have a lot of ways that that can be done. We have uh, symposiums internally where you can go and speak. And, and then of course the open group has uh, conferences that you can speak at as well as forums that you can join and contribute to the, the discipline. Um, by creating reference architectures and frameworks and things that really help uh, the enterprise architecture discipline. So I usually try and get uh, the people that I'm mentoring involved in some of those types of things uh, and that that helps them grow. And it's helped me grow as well, just um, doing that, those internal and external uh, contributions to the architecture discipline. Excellent. So 
I got a question for you, Paul, because, you know, I keep getting this one over and over again. And that is, you know, um, can I only get professionally certified after I get my TOGAF certification? Uh, yeah, a common a common uh, uh, misperception. So um, uh, the simple answer is no, and I, but I'll, I'll kind of expand on that. So there, there are many, many methods that are uh, approved, uh, permitted for, you know, within within the professions. And if I look at the architect profession in particular, then yes, there are many that uh, that you could have. TOGAF is, of course, one of them. Um, and a couple of things even within that. When you look at um, the adoption of any method, you don't adopt it strictly. I mean, you know, it's sort of you have to tailor TOGAF twice, as, as we all know, if you're familiar with TOGAF. Um, so how people uh, adopt method and use method is a big part of that. The one thing I would say is what we're looking for is a structured architectural approach that demonstrates an element of consistency, repeatability, options considered, you know, helps uh, 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 that structured thinking, solid thinking that then leads to um, decision making. And the reason we do that is because what you're really trying to evidence and put forward is that what you're doing is repeatable with consistent outcomes and is based on uh, a recognized good practice. Yeah, excellent. Uh, so uh, last one, um, or last couple, shall I say, uh, OpenCDS is, uh, is uh, developing a new badge, comes before level one, Maureen. What are you guys doing? What's going on there? We are innovating, Andres. So as we said, we try to keep the profession alive. And what we are introducing is a credential that comes before the level one experienced um, so that people in the data scientist profession will, who are perhaps students or in boot camps who have some hands-on um, skills that they can use will enable them to kind of get on the certification path early. It's kind of a fast start for them so that they're, they don't have to have client projects where they've driven outcomes like you do for level one, uh, the experience level. And, uh, but you can use the uh, hands-on, maybe you've done some projects uh, within an academic setting or a boot camp to earn this credential. And it will give you that fast start to your career because it'll show you what the coming standards are and really kind of help that transition. So we're very excited uh, to introduce this and, and launch it shortly. So you're going to trial it and, it and it might show up in other, you know, profession certification programs as well later on. That's what the hope is. Yes. Awesome. That is, that's some great work there. Um, so, you know, a, a lot of uh, folks are saying like, I have, you know, many vendor and training certifications. So why should I get professionally certified? So this is, you know, kind of like a great ending question. Scott, uh, what do you say to those people? You know, I get that question all the time. And what I do is I split the difference between what it means to be certified from a product perspective, as opposed to what it means to have an open profession certification. One, the product certification is about the content of a body of knowledge, making sure that you have learned that and being able to utilize that in a question and answer type experience. The other open profession certification is really about that experiential work. As Maureen just noted, having actually gone out and performed that in a client setting or within your own organization, being able to deliver projects using that information. That is a distinct difference. And to me, and the way I explain it to both the organization that I have professional leadership in for certification, as well as directly to those that I mentor and to the professional staff that I have, is the fact that being able to actually demonstrate that you've performed this capability is a significant differentiator and is a strong reason to support the overall certification path, the plans to grow your career, and the reason behind wanting to pursue a stepwise ability to increase your own knowledge and to be able to demonstrate that externally. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this has been an excellent panel. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions to these folks, you can certainly send them in and uh, we'll be uh, ready and willing to uh, engage you with the uh, opportunity to become professionally certified. So thank you very much.